We now have a session with Hani, Nick and Ahmed queuing straight or improving our ability to queue straight. If we watch Hani approaching the shot here. Now, he's nice and parallel to the table. The queue is nice and parallel to the bed of the table. Not too high off the cushion and also not too low to the cushion. If the queue is very low to the cushion, almost touching the cushion, the the queue has a risk. There is a risk of the queue making contact with the cushion. So always better to have a few millimeters, a centimeter height above the cushion to ensure that the queue can go through unhindered in its path through the cue ball rather than the arm being focused with avoiding the cushion, the cue can be focused with going through the cue ball smoothly and sweetly without any barriers like the cushion getting in the way. Now, let's allow... And he just he's finished his cueing now. And we'll go step by step. Oh, look at that, he's coming back. Now, if I just draw a line here... So, we've got a bit of a difference there between where he was queuing and where he's come back. Now, this is quite common. Um, the elbow, obviously, let's draw a line on the elbow. The elbow, as the queue comes back, the, if the queue is to remain perfectly straight, the elbow has to drop when you come back. I mean, it's like a, a, a piston in an engine or the arm on a train wheel going backwards and forwards. Uh, if the elbow is locked, the grip hand, if the elbow is frozen in position, the grip hand will lift when you come back. That has the effect of uh, also lifting the head. The cue lifts, the head will lift, and because the head is connected to the shoulders, strangely enough, when the head lifts, it moves to one side because we're not stood both sides of the shot. The head will lift to the to Hanny's left here, so it will take the cue off the line if you bring the head up. Contrary to popular opinion, bringing the head up uh, cannot be done perfectly straight. Uh, the natural way of lifting that up is to one side. Uh, that's the natural way to do it. You go to the club and test, and you'll see that that is correct. Now if we go forward step by step here, we'll see another common... Oh, what's all that about? You can see there... Alright, let's draw a little line on the head as well. Okay. Frame forward step by step. See, look at that. You the whole lot is lifting that. So he's got all of a sudden, different position at the end of the backswing. Uh, he's queuing in one position. At the end of the backswing, it's a different position. And at the beginning of the delivery, it's another position. So at the back of the backswing, he's not only lifted, but then in preparation for the delivery, lifted again. And this is, this is all connected to an awareness or lack of awareness of what's happening in the shoulders, the upper part of the body, the elbow. Um, if all those are completely relaxed and you are totally aware of everything that is happening there, in other words, if you move slowly enough during this part of the uh, backswing and strike, it will be very easy to control exactly what is happening. Now let's there you go, the cue comes back down there. But his head is still in an elevated position. So his head in is, is in a different position. Now not on the line of aim. Again, go to the club and prove this to yourself. So what chances has he got really of delivering the cue perfectly on the line? We know he's potted this ball, but for, for a century break player, that's an easy shot. And that's why I set this shot up as very easy, because I wasn't interested in the player's ability to pot. I'm interested in their ability to uh, observe exactly what they're doing. And that's what we were doing perfectly in this, in this uh, tape. 
session together. Now, I've asked Hanny here to exaggerate his cue actions. We'll do a bit more later on, but as he comes back, I've asked him every time he cues up, come all the way back with the tip to the thumb of the bridge hand. So he exaggerates his cueing, you see that, and he's still got that habit. Let's go forward step by step. Now, look at his elbow. His elbow actually is remaining almost, well, let's go back. There we are. So if we go forwards here, elbow starting position, and as we come back, the elbow is almost locked. Okay, it does come back a little bit there, but it doesn't drop down enough to allow the cue to come back perfectly straight. So I think Hanny now would just stand up and refresh himself. Just getting used to that feeling of exaggerating his cue. There you go, he's slowing down, and at this point, he'll be starting to notice exactly what the cue is doing. We'll be telling him, you can, be, you can rest assured of that, but he'll also be able to see it on the screen after he's done this every time, and um, slowing down what's happening, exaggerating what's happening, so that there is no escape from his mind of what the body is doing. He's still getting used to this exaggerated slow motion action. And this isn't easy. You can see that uh, the habit is quite nicely ingrained. And we're not forcing anything here. We are just Having fun, watching what's happening, noticing. Now let's we can remove those. Let's move that onto his cue. Drop that down, lift this one up. And let's carry on. Let's just see. Okay, it's still coming up a little bit, but he's doing very nicely. You see, when he goes through here, it's much straighter. So Nick demonstrating. Just demonstrating here. Um... What he'd like Hanny to do, in other words, not saying that he's so perfect at what he's doing, but just the speed. Again, I'm not trying to demonstrate uh, perfection here, but I'm trying to demonstrate how to play the shot to increase the player's awareness of what is happening. And that's all I want Hanny to do, uh, because out of awareness comes his own perfect style of playing the ball. I don't know how he should be playing the ball anywhere near as well as his own body does. And neither does he, to that matter, consciously. His body knows better than any of us. So, and the awareness is the only path to that secret garden of wonderful knowledge and control that he will then gain from complete awareness. Now, there you go. So I'm just coming back all the way with the cue. Exaggerating my cueings. Yeah, I've just I've just slowed the film down a little bit here, so Just moving a line closer to the cue. Just rewinding the film and let's go forward here. We're going at half speed now. I've slowed the film down to half speed so we can we can see what's happening more clearly. That's the beauty of frame by frame advance. I'll just stop the film there while I g deliver this point. 
I've slowed the film down. I've slowed my cueing down. That helps my feeling. And when we play back for the players, slowing the film down also has a huge benefit, especially frame by frame, huge benefit of seeing exactly what they're doing, when and how. And let's stop talking and start watching again. There you go, it's coming back pretty well. And, yeah, so I play the shot there. So what you can see here is I'm just coming back here now with the uh, film. And uh, quite a nice long pause there at the end. And this is going backwards. So that's the starting position on the cue ball. Now we're going forwards here, frame by frame. I know this is going quite slowly now, but this is a very important point. I mean, I'm just demonstrating. Okay. So the cues come back. Okay, and maybe has lifted half a half an inch. So, well, I'm not perfect, not pretending to be. I'm at the end of the backswing here, and as you can see, look at the gap. The the head has remained still. Look at the gap between where the elbow started and when the, where the elbow now is. The elbow has to drop that much in order to keep the. And you watch the John Higgins of this world and all these guys on TV. If their cues coming back. Parallel, the elbow has to be dropping when it goes through. Now, the cue is remaining perfectly motionless here. And as the backswing starts, the cue has not lifted at all during the pause at the backswing while I change gear and change direction with the cue. And as it starts the delivery, there's none of this lunging that comes from a tight shoulder usually and tension in the shoulder and lack of confidence that the shot can be played. Let me show you. The shot needs to be played from here to here. Okay. Most players who are not smooth and straight and controlled on the backswing. Let's see if we can do this. They tend to come from here. They play the shot from here. So they come from the shoulder through the elbow with all the power and might they can muster and uh, no wonder things don't go smoothly and in a relaxed way. As you can see there the cue going through exactly on the path that it started and finishing also pretty much perfect. And we did this kind of uh, evaluation after the shot for Hani and uh, also Ahmed who will join us in a while. Here's another shot. Again playing at half speed. Now I'm playing a screw shot. They've asked me to play a screw shot here. So let's lift the line for the cue there. Again, remember this is half speed, just for our benefit. The, the video is half speed. And then there you go. I'm just, just rewinding it here. So, ready for the backswing, coming back, that stopped, the cue stopped perfectly on the line, and let's just check for any imperfection, frame by frame until the delivery starts, no, it's going through the ball pretty much perfectly, and nice little screw shot there, okay, the cue's dropped a little bit, but generally on a screw shot, the... Um, the tip of the cue will hit the cloth and that will just encourage the uh, the butt of the cue to drop half an inch or so on delivery 
to avoid scraping the uh, cloth. So you can liken it to a plane landing the cue uh, with a screw shot. It's almost like the cue is the plane landing on the bed of the table. And let's have a look at Hanny again. Just moving that onto the actual line of aim. And we can watch Hanny now. Again, half speed. Now, w is that an improvement? I do believe it is. But again, and I'm actually glad he didn't pot that because this shows that he improved dramatically the delivery of his action there. Let's get him forward. There we are. Look how he look how he comes back. It's absolutely beautiful and controlled compared to what he was doing two minutes ago. Look at that. That's beautiful. That is. He's much more relaxed uh, around this area here. He looks much more relaxed. <coughs> and I'm going frame by frame here again for our benefit. There's a slight lifting, but it's absolutely nowhere near what it was three or four shots ago. So that's marvellous. Keep going, honey. You're doing well. And always best to put a chalk mark on the table to represent where the balls should go here. Let's have a look what the cue does here on the backswing. That looked a lot better to me. Let's give him one more chance to show off his newfound skill. Just again for our benefit, putting the line exactly where the cue is. And there we are. Normal speed this is. Really like a piston that is. That's lovely, that is beautiful. What a beautiful improvement after four or five minutes. I mean, he, he's absolutely taken control of the cue and, and verbally while we were doing this, his eye, he, he was amazed at uh, the improvement and the increased feeling of control. Now look at that. Look how he's moving the cue so straight now. Just because it's a little bit slower. Okay, he's lifted up a bit there. A bit of a regression. Again. A little bit of a regression. Now here, I think you, we can see now he's slowed up a little bit, the action. And what I asked him to do there was deliberately hold the cue at the end of the backswing for more time than he normally would. That gives him more time to feel, feel exactly what the arm and the shoulder and the other shoulder and this part of the arm and this part of the arm if the player stops at the end of the backswing and can feel what all those four parts of the body are doing or trying to do then they cannot help but be in a better position of awareness as to what relaxation, what level of relaxation or lack of relaxation they actually do have. So we're going to remove those awareness bubbles and has he got one more shot? Now this is uh, Ahmed. So to wrap up with Hani there, 
basically a little bit more slowly increased his control two or three fold very good job so let's have a look at Ahmad we can move the line to his head and that one to his elbow normal speed this is on the film that's already pretty good don't forget he's actually watched this already so watched Hanny going through this now I'm just going to show you one thing here which I think we were working on now if we go from use the pencil tool uh, maybe not let's use this one so you can see that straight line from Ahmed's forearm to his little finger say all right now he's almost at the end of his the backswing action now let's look now what's all that wrist action going on so now we're in a position where somewhere between almost being at the back and being at the back and starting to move forward then we have this type of arrangement now the wrist is broken but it doesn't seem to be moving in a consistent or meaningful way uh, and seems to be overkill or exaggeration of this wrist break uh, you don't actually need a vicious wrist break to um, achieve your objectives on the shot so we're gonna have a look at this we're gonna put some awareness on this um, over the next few minutes but let's there you go, the arm's gone straight again there, the grip hand and the forearm. Again, it's straight as he comes back, but then break. Usually as a player, um, goes from, and let's remove some of these. I'll explain something here very briefly. usually as a player goes from here which is the cue ball address position to here to let's say here and then finally to here as the cue comes back to the one two third position there at the end fourth position there at the end on the top professionals you'll see them if they uh, break the wrist hand as they come back then it's gradually done so that when it comes back to the first point it's 25 percent broken the, s the second point it's 50 percent broken and when it comes back to the end it's 100 percent broken um, the advantage of course of just breaking the wrist there slightly is that when you move the arm through the forearm is accelerating into the cue ball and the wrist is moving forward as well the wrist is moving for the cue forward into the cue ball as well so you have two sets of acceleration um, Steve Davis has won champ world championships without doing that uh, you don't have to do that but most players on the circuit benefit from uh, an extra sense of timing by doing that club standard anything up to century break you don't really need to worry too much about that but it's it would be nice to, for you to get into the habit and there we are coming to the end of our movie here now if we just go forward so he's come back straight here and just by slowing down what he's doing and watching the film after every shot see watch how the wrist is remaining straight look at that isn't that miraculous 
So just by slowing down what he's doing, watching what he's doing, feeling what he's doing, he's taken out a lot of unnecessary, unwanted, unrequired, over-the-top movement there with the wrist, and fine. Well done. What a player, what a student. You can see there's um, perhaps a very small angle on the wrist there as he's come back. I'm just going backwards here, yeah. So you can see there that the, the wrist is angled slightly forward. And as he comes back here, you can see there that he is actually breaking the wrist a little bit. There you go. Comes back. Just look for the change, very slight change of angle on the wrist. There you go. And, I mean, that's beautiful. It's very, very similar to what a lot of the top 16 pros will be doing. And there you go, beautifully through the cue ball. Shame he didn't pot the shot. But, again, this goes back to our, um, our maxim that uh, when your awareness is on something that you haven't noticed before, uh, it should come off the shot. And, uh, and and it should come off potting the ball. Uh, usually uh, my experience is that after 5, 10, 20 shots maybe, um, the player can then concentrate on what they normally do with their new habit ingrained or certainly getting that way. So let's see if we've got any more shots available for us here. Let's just pause that while we remove these. We can get a full view of what's happening. In fact, let's leave that line there. Normal speed this on the queuing. Look at that. Look how much she's reduced. Ah, that's beautiful. Lovely action. Very, very nice. Excellent. Just by awareness this. Well done.